On this episode of Rising Week, we take a look at the new TCL QLED and the content available for it, looking at wireless audio and when to do it and when not, and AV over IP and the network in the home. All that and more next on Resi Week. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is Resi Week, episode 237, recorded Monday, August 17th, 2020. Application Conversation. Support for AV Nation is brought to you by Atlas IED, innovative audio solutions for every business environment, and by Access Networks. This is Resi Week, the weekly look at the residential audiovisual space. My name is Tim Albright. Uh, I'm not Matt Scott. Uh, he's taller and more handsome than I am, but I'm older. So I don't know if that makes it me wiser or what. Uh, with me uh, to talk about all things uh, residential AV, first and foremost, my buddy and pal, Mr. Jason Knott from CE Pro. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me, Tim. Absolutely, absolutely. And also uh, a young man that I met a number of years ago, one of our, our, our fantastic uh, sponsors and underwriters, Hagai Feiner from Access Networks. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me, Tim. Uh, let's kick this off here with a couple of things. First and foremost, uh, actually, it's, it's a story that came uh, from Jason's uh, CE Pro, how AV over IP is influencing the home and office audio. Now, this is written by Brad Price, and Brad goes into talking about how a number of folks, I would say the majority of not just Americans, but folks uh, outside the U.S. are working from home and how that's impacting what some of this is doing. Now, uh, Jason, on this, talk for a second about the residential dealer and what they're having to do now to both put audio and video on the network and, and how that's honestly not stressing the, the networks, but showing uh, signs where they can upgrade and a- increase, you know, not just revenue, but also come back in and, and do another touch on, on their clients. Yeah, it, it sounds like, it sounds like a broken record here, but we've been talking about this ever since the pandemic hit that, you know, I talked to a dealer, I was down visiting a dealer last week, actually, and he said the first month and a half when the pandemic hit, every call was exact words were network, 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 network. Yeah. Uh, and he's a big access network guy uh, too, by the way, a guy. So the opportunity to upgrade the network when the kids are home now schooling, the uh, parents are home working from home, you're stuck at home streaming audio, streaming video, uh, it's a no brainer for the integrator and if they don't upgrade the network, then the performance for all the other uh, things I just mentioned, audio, video, and even control like voice. We had a conversation, Hagai and I uh, had a conversation about the um, effects of voice and how much more poorly that performs if you have a non-enterprise network. And I think I think I saw Hagai tweeted something out saying, forget the, this term residential network. There shouldn't even be that term. It should be, everything should be an integrate, enterprise grade network. So yeah, it has been the primary focus for integrators since the pandemic hit and deservedly so. Yeah. Well, Hagai, let's, let's go, go to that tweet and then we're going to touch on something else here. But, but why should every network be an, an, be an enterprise network when, you know, I can, I can run to a box store and, and buy a $20 wireless router that also has, you know, several pieces of connectivity in the back and I can run five or six devices. Wow. I think we all know cheap ain't cheap, right? Uh, so, so that would be point number one. But I think nowadays, beyond uh, the the perils of box store type gear, the homeowners that we're dealing with have a lot less tolerance for you coming back to fix things that are not working, or for things not working at all. But especially when an integrator has to get involved physically and show up at the site. I don't want anyone in my house if they don't have to go there. Um, and so there is less tolerance on the homeowner part. We've seen it, you know, everything that Jason just mentioned is showing up on, you know, on our back end, if you will. Uh, we're seeing a lot more movement when it comes to systems. Not only is access growing, but specifically the custom business of access is growing because integrators know that there is an expertise here, for example, that they don't have in house. And we can deliver a system that they can then go deploy and they don't have to go back into that house in most cases 
unless there are some extreme things that are that are happening in that household that we don't have any control over. Um, and so the combination of the hardware along with the expertise of the engineering department design uh, is really what's driving that business across the board. And I think, you know, looking back at Brad Price's article, he wasn't really talking about the network. We're addressing it at access on the network front. But he was talking about the audio gear uh, specifically in the home uh, and specifically when it comes to video conferencing. And I can tell you, you know, right now you're listening to me in a room that hasn't been tuned in any way for acoustics. Uh, and I'm using a Logitech uh, camera with a, a microphone built into it. It's not the best experience you and I can have on this conversation. Who is that integrator that's gonna come and upgrade my system or potentially engage us as a company with 40 or 40 something team members and look at upgrading all their homes? No one really engaged us. We're a client of some uh, commercial integrator that I will not mention here. They haven't called me and said, hey, do you wanna upgrade your team members' home systems? Let us ship you a package with you know with an upgraded camera and an upgraded microphone and no one's ever had that conversation with me i think the integration channel is relatively asleep when it comes to the actual experience of the if you will zoomers there's a huge opportunity here um and of course all that is driven by the network but we can't forget the actual av gear that we're using here a uh, perfect example from Access Networks is we have our CFO working from home. She's a young mother. Um, pandemic kind of forced her to stay at home. She wasn't coming to the office that much before, but she had the most terrible setup. So she had a network that was lagging. Uh, none of our conversations were good. I couldn't hear her. She would truncate. She would sound like digital, like she's in the matrix somewhere. Uh, we forced her to replace her network. And actually across the board, we that triggered a forced uh, replacement for everybody to replace their networks at home to access networks. Um, and that solved her connectivity problem. But guess what? Her speakers are next to her laptop and the microphone she's, use, she's using is built into her laptop. And constantly when she speaks, there's an echo. What do you do with that? Why, you know, we're spending so much money on infrastructure the amount of time we lost with this uh, young lady working, trying to work from home and people not understanding her on calls, it, you can't even equate that to whatever the cost of a new setup would be. And so I can totally see why this article was put together. I, I commend Brad Price for saying, hey, um, if it's not enterprise grade, it's not good enough. And I think uh, in the industry, I know that the industry is revisiting this on a networking platform but it's also time to revisit this on an AV communication platform. All right, uh, Mr. Knott, that, that brings up a question that, that oddly enough, I asked on, on my show, AV Week, last week. Who's going to do this? And there's, there's a reason I ask this, because what you're talking about, at least in the States, other parts of the world, the, the, the residential and the commercial lines kind of, kind of meld together. That's why ISE... Integrated Systems Europe has been such a success, successful show. It's, it's got both elements, right? Here in the States, though, those have been two lines that have not been crossed very much. Who's, who's going to do it? Is it going to be the residential folks that say, let me get my hands on some commercial grade gear. And just like a guy said, put in, put in, you know, quality, you know, soundproofing and, um, you know, auto echo canceling, you know, DSPs. Or is it going to be the commercial folks who go, you know what? My clients are now at home. Let me go in, into the home and help them. Well, let me see. Since I'm the editor of CE Pro, I'm going to say the residential guys are going to do it. Um, but here's why. You know, I've spoken with, you know, RTI, URC, Crestron. These are companies that are actively using the term resimercial in their yep. conversations. And I can remember specifically meeting um, with Crestron a while back and they were showing me some of this conferencing gear and at this is before the pandemic this is in January and they were actually they told me that almost all of the commercial corporate office projects that were fewer than five boardrooms were being done by residential integrators not commercial integrators wow. because the jobs are too small for the big commercial guys so um, 
it's a huge opportunity. These guys need to be carrying it over. The Resi Mercial, what we're, we actually have a tag on CE Pro called Resi Mercial. If anybody wants to check it out, CE Pro Resi Mercial, it's right up on the main nav bar. And it's exactly the kind of stuff we're talking about here. Thanks so much for watching this first segment of Resi Week. To check out the rest of the episode for free, click on the link below and go by the website, avianation.tv, avianation.tv. Thank you.